Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an Impressionist Realist Painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative paint in watercolor, tin and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Well, hello, and welcome to the podcast. This is Clyde J. Kell, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 86, for March the 1st, 2021. And I'm here with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson, my two best artist friends. And hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everybody. Hello, Constance. Hey, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. We're starting the podcast a little bit late because we were having such a wonderful discussion catching up on what's been going on in the week, talking about family, relatives, and we just happen to enjoy uh, the companionship uh, each week. Then we have to record this for some work. <laughs> <laughs> well, Don't make work. it sound so much like drudgery. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> really not, actually. Yeah, we... I hope that it will, the information we talk about is useful to our listeners. And um, the theme for this week was uh, more of a, like our studio practice or this, uh, as, this life as, as an artist, living an artist's life. You know? and, um, so if you go to www.talkartpodcast.com, that's talkartpodcast.com, You'll see the recommended uh, videos for our uh, discussion. And uh, I put two videos on on there from uh, a little short one from uh, Steve Houston. And what I like about Steve was he's not only is he showing, showing you uh, the uh, helping you improve your skill set in, in figurative uh, drawing, but he also uh, uh, gives a, basically a talk of his philosophy, and he has such a, uh, a positive uh, attitude. Uh, Diane, what's your, did you watch those two videos? What's your opinion of that? Yeah, well, he was talking a little bit about um, how when you're a kid, you have no um, inhibitions as far as what you're you know, creating art and being creative in general, and all kids are always creative and, you know, making things and playing and, you know, inventing stuff. And it all kind of gets um, trained out of us or whatever when we go to school and, you know, as we get older and well, a lot of people lose it completely. And it's really detrimental to your life and how, you know, um, you kind of lose that creativity. And it's, it's creativity is a big part of, being a human <laughs> yeah. you know it's an, it's really integral and it's sad that there's so many people out there that don't think they can make art or, or be creative 
even if it doesn't turn out like they want it to, you know, it's just the whole um, practice of, of doing, being creative and, and playing and, you know, enjoying yourself. A that, lot of people don't do that. Absolutely. And that they think that, that if they're working artists, they think that every, uh, every piece they're working on has to be a masterpiece. Everything has to be just perfect, just so, so, and you don't take time to play. And that's why I like uh, Steve, his talk as he's drawing there, you know, he's, He's, uh, you know, talking about, he said, you just got to learn to play, you know, yeah, yeah, not be, not be afraid to put a mark on the piece of paper and, and, you know, if it doesn't turn out, turn the page, start over again, or like he did, just keep adding to that page until you, you know, it's, you got to practice doing it in order to learn how to do it correctly, or it doesn't matter, I, I guess correctly is not the right word for it, but until you're satisfied with what you're expecting to see on the page. Well, his, uh, exercising that, those brain cells, making those, that synaptic uh, connection between your hands and your brain. You know, so the brain is, in a sense is just like a, mu a muscle, you know, athletes, they spend hours and hours and hours, you know, uh, working their muscles and working their, their body. And uh, it says artists is the same way. So when you're, you know, with your sketchbook there, you're drawing. I think we talked about that before. We're like with a, we use the, Stephen Bauman used a piano analogy, right, Diana? Yeah. And yeah. Any kind of arts really you have, I mean, there's, you know, a practice you have to practice, keep, continue to practice no matter how, you know, um, masterful you are. You, you, even people that like, I mean, I've been painting for years and years and I still practice and I still, you know, take time to draw and just do the basics and just um, try to get better all the time. I mean, I don't, I don't think anybody that's an artist could, can ever be satisfied. It's like you're, you're always striving to get, you know, better and you see somebody else, um, what they do, and you're like, huh, I, why didn't I think of that? And then you're like, you know, trying to see if you can do that too and you get all these other ideas and it's um, I don't, it's like an end, endless process. This is a, I think I could look at it as growing, you know, as an artist because you're always growing as an artist. Uh, yeah, you may not like what you did in this painting, but then the, you'll change things in the next one or try something new in the next one. Or Steve Houston in one of the other videos that we had watched uh, talked about that. Uh, uh, stealing from other artists. And I recall in the interview when he first said it, a young man that was looked at him kind of funny, you know, he said, no, he says, not copying, but when you see another artist do something a certain way, it, it will inspire you. And well, Hey, why didn't I, like Diane just said, why didn't I think of that? You know, and mm -hmm. you can uh, use it and adapt it for your own purposes. Right which I think falls in line with his discussion in these two videos about playing, you know, he says, have fun, you know, and that we are so uh, blessed and lucky that uh, this is you know, part of the artist's life, that we have this talent, that we can do this when so many millions of other people can't <laughs> and uh, that we shouldn't uh, beat ourselves up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know that it, uh, people can't do it. It's just that they don't, and they they've been taught or um, it's been learned out of them or something, yeah. like you know, throughout their life, and or they had somebody tell them they were horrible or you know put them down about trying it or you know doing anything creative or artistic, and it's been it's kind of gotten, especially in the U.S. I guess it's really got a negative connotation when you tell people you know as you're when you're a kid that you want to be an artist and they're like oh, oh yeah. you know you, everybody kind of take say that you know you're not gonna make any money doing that where it's it's not all about money it's it's just a, a part of your humanity <laughs> you know it's yeah self-expression you know being able to express yourself without somebody putting you down for at least playing i mean because it you're, you're yeah, right. it doesn't I mean, mean I, everybody everything you do has to be a masterpiece i mean it's that's not what it's about it's yeah. kind of like you know they have these adult coloring books now i mean people are starting to be a lot more creative than they used to be because things are so much i'd like to say easier than they were back in 
the 1950s or 60s, you know. Well, some uh, science has actually proved that as, as we get older, it, uh, yeah, it's good to, uh, like, yeah, that's why those adult coloring books are, you know, became more popular because it keeps the, uh, keeps your brain, you know, function that when people, uh, are, uh, doing something creative, especially the, you know, older adults, uh, it actually helps, uh, ward off the possibility of Alzheimer's and, you know, and other, you know, uh, diseases. So, uh, and I think I told you guys a story about my, you know, my mother, my mother does, uh, those, uh, coloring books and, uh, she has always been the person that says she wasn't creative, but she's creative in her own sense. I mean, how did I become an artist? I, wouldn't, I got it from my mother, you know, <laughs> a little bit of it. You know? And uh, we were talking one time, and I was describing to her, uh, I don't know how we got in the conversation, but I got on to about the, you know, the color wheel and complementary colors and mixing colors. And said, all of a sudden she oh, so that's why when I put that green down and then I add a little bit of yellow to it, it looks more like a, like a, like a, 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 a kind of a yellow green, you know, a color that I don't have, have a pencil for. I said, that's mm -hmm. I said, you're mixing colors with that. Oh, really? Well, when we get done, she was so excited because she was going to try <laughs> I described some other some other color combination for the try, and she, oh, I'm going to try that. Yeah, <laughs> she was, you ought to get her a color wheel and mail it to her so she can learn about triads and and the different color combinations that she can put on her on her uh, in her but coloring she, books. She was only coloring, you know, the colors that she had a pencil for, you know. And I said, no, you can mix you can mix those those colors, <laughs> uh, get different colors. Oh, wow. I mean, <laughs> but it just thrilled me because here she's 80 years old, you know, and I thought I worry about her, you know, and a lot of times she'll have the TV going, but then she'll sit there. She's got a little tray. She pops up on her, you know, on her easy chair and she sits back and fills in the coloring books, you know, and she used to do uh, jigsaw puzzles, but her, her eyes, she had, she said she kept getting headaches. So she quit. So this is the next version. This is, coloring you know adult coloring books you know i imagine it's a lot a lot less stress on her eyes to look to color than it is to look at all those little tiny pieces of puzzles yeah because some of those puzzles can be very you know you have to look at them hard to figure out where they're going to go yeah but she's well she was the whole time when we were growing up she uh was a big jigsaw puzzle fan because mm -hmm. i was going to send her one a custom jigsaw puzzle with some artwork in and she said, no, I don't do those anymore. Don't, don't, don't do it. You'd be, you'd be wasting your money. <laughs> and, yeah, it was, uh, but, uh, yeah, it, uh, it just thrilled me that, you know, she does those, those, you know, adult coloring books, you know, and, uh, she, uh, uh, just slowly, you know, works on them a little bit at, at a time. Yeah. You know? And I, I was teasing her. I said, now, do you stay within the lines? <laughs> 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 and that was a reference back when we were growing up. We used to always be yeah, <laughs> yelled at. Yeah, we got to stay within the lines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's part of that thing that you get thing your creativity taught out of you when you're young because when adults help you help try to help you color and draw that they want you to make it look exactly like it's supposed to look when you look at it instead of being more creative about how you want to portray it, you know. <laughs> Well, when you talk about creative, my my mother also used to do the uh, uh, paint by numbers, and I remember vividly when I was like I don't know, about eight or nine years old, you know, she was doing quite a few. So I wanted to do one, so she bought me a set. Uh, it didn't go so well because I kept wanting to pick. <laughs> <laughs> she got so mad at me, so angry. <laughs> You're supposed to go by the numbers. Yeah, but that don't look right, Mom. That, <laughs> that that's when you were going rogue on her. <laughs> that's when she knew I was probably going to be an artist because I didn't want to. I didn't like following the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next video, which I thought was really interesting, was good. Was our friend Raffi, and he yeah he talks about you know it's it, it's 
never too late to pursue what you love. So what did you guys think about that discussion? Was that, was that motivational? Yeah. Or... Yeah. I mean, yeah. You think about yeah. it. Yeah. Go ahead. Your grandma ahead. Moses never painted until she was 80, I think, didn't she? Because she, her hands got where she couldn't quilt anymore, so she started painting. But I think a lot of artists um, go through what he was talking about, how you uh, try different things and then you um, – you know it's not right for you so you you kind of switch to something else for a while and you're like searching trying to find your outlet you know and it's, you try all these different things and it, you find it's not quite right so you quit that and you try something else and i think artists in general that and people that end up being artists um, they are very adaptable they're you know you're, you're not afraid to like stop doing one thing that's not um giving you, uh, you know, the, what you want out of life and, and switch to something else. We're not as, um, uh, I don't know how to say that. <laughs> we're more, we're more. Conformists. We don't conform. We're not like pigs. Yeah, but we're, we're more risky. Like we're risk taker takers, you know, we don't know if yeah. something's going to turn out or not. We're, um, so, we'll, but we'll try it anyway kind of thing. Yeah. We're not, we don't have that fear like a lot of people do. Yeah, that's I think, true. Um, you know, you work through that and you you try different I mean I've had a bazillion different jobs and things through the years but I knew that nothing you know wasn't the right thing and I, sometimes I just did jobs because I knew I had to pay bills and I you know wasn't to the point where I could make enough with my art to do it so I had to sacrifice myself for a while and do whatever I needed to do to get by but I, it, it, I still constantly came back to you know making more art it's like it never let you know it doesn't leave you it's always nagging at you until you <laughs> yeah until you get to the uh the uh the words of uh paul klein uh was in my ears uh when one of our sessions that we had with him and when he says uh you know you're an artist and you can't help it you're going to be creative regardless if you make money or regardless if you make a career out of it or not you're going to do it. You can't help it. For some people, it's worse. You know, over the years, artists have drank themselves to death or drugs, you know, killed them because they couldn't reach that certain level of satisfaction. But he says, you can't help it. And I think that is so true with you know, many artists. There are people, I've met many people that, especially when I was working where I was working before, when I was starting out, when I decided I was going to pursue this and try to make a career out of it, out of the woodwork. And well, you know, my brother, he draws a little bit, you know, and they just show me some things. I said, so what is he doing? Well, he's not doing much now. I said, why not? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And finally, a lot of them started getting tired of it because they didn't want to hear my speech. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to you're going to create, but you know you you've got to uh, the next step is is uh, giving it to the world because and I ser I I am with with what I've been able to achieve I'm so humbled I know at times it sounds like I'm bloviating but I'm just so humbled that I've been given that ability and that gift to share it to the world. You know, and if I can make a living of it, then that's part of the reward. But that's not the central point. The main point is getting it out there and giving it to, you know, giving it to the world. You know, and, and uh, they, uh, I had a, 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 my recent blog post uh, was a little bit about that. Uh, the, uh, I call it, I've, uh, I've crossed the Rubicon, which is a, a uh, ancient Roman, uh, without going into details, a phrase, it's, I've reached a point of no return. And I'm not going to go over the blog post, but the gist of it was that I've created enough works of art and I've put enough of them out there to where I cannot, if I were to stop today and not ever draw a paint again, I cannot say I'm not an artist because people are going to say, well, what, what's that? What, 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 what are all those, what are all those things got your name on them? So what, you're not an artist? Are your fingers broke? What's going on? <laughs> so I, I've reached that a point of no return. I can't go back. I can't pull it back. No, I didn't. No, I don't want to do that. There's, 
I, 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 well, first of all, my daughters would kill me. They would, <laughs> yeah, they would force me to, to, to draw <laughs> or to paint something. You know? And, uh, it's a shame. I know there's a lot of other people that have that talent and have that creativity. And like we were saying earlier, they're, uh, when they, you know, when they were little, their parents or relatives said, well, no, that's, you can't, you can't make a living at doing that. When people don't under, understand, it's not so much as that. It's uh, when you're creating art, you, you're being human. You're directly connecting with the human race because they have found ancient caves, even back in the cavemen days. They created art. They found it on the walls, you know, the draw. Somebody got up there and drew an animal that, that they killed, you know, or whatever. And <laughs> yeah, and that says a lot about the arts. I mean, people, you know, a lot of people don't think that they're all that important, but even people back in caveman days, I mean, besides mm -hmm. having some kind of shelter and food, they created art, which is kind of crazy. It seems like it wouldn't be... Um, something that was necessary, but it was. It, I mean, it, they couldn't survive without doing it, so it had to have been really important. So. Yeah, they do stories I like the you know the stories on the of the Indians do um, in the caves where they it was like hunting scenes, you know. Yep, and it gets gets back to you know Ralph Ralphie's uh, emphasis is talk of. Uh, you're never too old, you know, to pursue your dreams. You know, you can uh, just pick up that paintbrush, pick up that pencil, and you know, start making, start, start making some art. Start, you know, you can, uh, you can do it. And let's see. Then the next video was uh, was Stephen Bauman. Now, the first part of his talk, what was you know his his normal spiel, but what got me, what uh, I uh, picked up on. And what resonated with me when he started talking about, um, he says, because I, I keep hearing this term a lot, uh, the next level up, the next, the, 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 the next uh, 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 achievement as an artist, you know, how to reach that next level. Because I'm, I'm getting to, to that point now. I'm wanting to, to, it's not so much, I'm not a realist artist, but I'm wanting to, to get to that point to where uh, my works uh, have a, a certain uh, uniqueness, you know, about them that it's not just another flower painting. It's not just another ancient monument. It's not just another pair of shoes. It has something, you know, uh, uh, unique that, you know, make people go, wow. Yeah, that's the, that's the level that I'm... Uh, yeah, and I've done only a few pieces like that, and they were they were what uh, I like Stephen Bauman calls happy accidents. Yeah, <laughs> when I go back and I analyze and I look at them, and, and it was you know it was, it was all about you know the light and the shadowing that that and the coloring, color temperature that that made it you know made it stand out. And um, his uh, you know, his his talk uh, you know. Uh, using photographs and i disagreed with him in one sense i think what he was was focusing on was to me artists who who create works from photographs they try and they try and make it like the photograph which in the essence the piece becomes boring you know they try to they they try to render it like you know uh what they're seeing but not what they really see, and they don't put themselves, you know, you know, into it. And you put yourself in into it, your self-expression comes out with the manipulation of the light and the shadows and the, and the colors and everything. Diane, did you pick up on that? What he was talking on that? Or? Well, I think part of that is that he, I mean, he is trained as a plein air artist, and when you and I learned the same way. I, I, we never painted from photographs. I, I never used photographs until like right. last maybe three or four years, maybe. I always painted from life. And when you paint from life, you there's so much more than than just the objects that you see. 
that you get into your painting. It's like, um, and you can you can change things around. You have the you know, a lot more ability to to move things and um, do things to you know make to improve your composition and the coloring of the, of the what you're seeing. And you can just change it up a lot more when you're seeing it from life and working from life than you can from a photograph. Photographs are very limiting. And people that haven't um, gotten out and painted from real objects and real life, you know, I mean, you can paint in your studio, but you, you know, if you're painting from like a, doing a still life, if you're actually seeing that glass or whatever in front of you, you can see a whole lot more color and be a lot more um, a, a part of it and a, attached to it. And you can get, you can get that under your canvas so much more than you can from a photograph. Yeah. But um, once you've done that in, in real life and to the point where you, you um, really know your subjects and can do that, then you can work from photographs because you have more than just the photograph to draw on. So, mm -hmm. you know, you get a lot more stuff in, a lot more um, feeling and uh, things into your paintings. And that's the point that, that, makes I, any sense. that I kind of disagree. Uh, I I use photographs for uh, for reference of uh, objects, and my compositions most of the time is from my imagination, and I I just use the photographs for the for the placement, and I and I do try to uh, spend time looking at uh, I don't know if it was Stephen Baumler or maybe it was Steve Houston or whatever artist who said that when you're sitting in your living room. And you see the shadow falls on objects, you know, as you just sketch it out or at least study it. And I spend a lot of time, but I see, but I, I, my mind just drifts. I will sp sometimes spend hours. I'll just be smoking my pipe and looking at how the light is, is falling on this, uh, from the ceiling. But you're looking at real light. You're not looking at a photograph of it. Yeah. So you're seeing all the color change and the, you know, you're that experiencing it, you're, it but more you're experiencing you know. it. Mm -hmm. and what and, and that 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 little, little those little exercises have actually helped me and mm -hmm. i'm when i'm uh, creating a composition and i'm looking at different reference photos for the objects of the composition those has helped me in in uh, portraying the the light and the shadow so Yes, you give a very good point. Like you were saying, yeah, you know, Diane, it does. You know, when you're looking at from life, you know, it, it does uh, uh, help you and, and improve. You know, improve your works. But I still, uh, I don't want to completely, you know, uh, put down the photograph because this is where I have the the, the illustrator. Because illustrators, I have the illustrator background. Because illustrators have files and files. They used to have. Like we watched what a video about uh, uh, of uh, uh, Roy Lichtenstein, you know, Lichtenstein when he uh, had files of uh, of clippings, you know, magazine clippings, and everything for reference material for ideals. Well, now with the digital, it's I have tons and tons. I'm always collecting photographs of things that for that, hey, that'd be all right for a future. Yeah, well, you can do that as far as your ideas, but for if you're really trying to see the colors that are there, you can't see them in photographs, no matter how good the photograph is. That Not won't give you well the amount of colors that, yeah. yeah, your eyes give you a lot more information. Yeah, when you're out doing a, doing a landscape painting, you can take a picture of what you're painting, which is something I do, but then go don't use the picture to paint from while you're out there, you use the live you know, because you see so much more color than is expressed in a photograph because, you know, there's only so many levels of of color that the printer or whatever is going to use, whereas your eye can see a whole lot more information than that. And then you can look at, as you're, if you're painting like, like Stefan said, if you're painting throughout the morning, you get to watch the way the shadow moves across the land a, with what you're painting and then uh, if you want to leave something out or add something in later you can because you have that information stored in your brain you know and you know how the shadow looks going across there you know 
It's yep. just different. It's like what it led to when he mentioned, you know, <laughs> some people, you know, they, they say, well, I want to make a bigger, you know, a bigger piece. And he says, well, you may start out in plain air with a small piece, but he said, don't complete it. Stop at a certain point. Yeah. You know, his, his whole emphasis. And- I agree with him <laughs> on that one. I, 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 I'm like him. I, I get bored. I wouldn't want to keep doing the same painting over and over in different sizes. That seems pointless. Yeah, to me. it does. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I already did that. Why do I want to do it again? <laughs> but a lot of artists do that. They'll make, yeah. Well, and then another thing is you can make like little pastel studies of things out in the field and then bring them back and do yeah. paintings from them. I mean, you can, it's just so up to what you like to do. His, uh-huh. his, his emphasis, which I picked up right away, is that in the creation process, uh, you are resolving the issues, you're resolving problems, and these, these little surprises pop up that makes the piece you know, stand out and it makes it, the, the piece unique, unique to your expression. It says, and when you do this enough, if you start out, you're just, you know, until you reach a certain level. And that's when he talks about achieving the next level. At a certain point, you're just rendering, basically. And it goes back to his preaching of each work of art is practice for the next one. You know, so you're, you're, uh, and, and that is how you achieve the level. Um, Steve Houston basically said it in a different way but saying the same thing with his talk about playing you know you're you're exercising those brain cells you're you're uh, making that connection between your brain and your hands and your eyes and opening up those those neural pathways to where after a while they just become kind of automatic you know and you mm-hmm. do it without really thinking much about it you know and, but oh, it's like if you go play tennis for the first time, are you good at it? No, not very many people <laughs> are. I mean, or anything that you do. I mean, when you watch a child learn how to walk, I'm an expert. Just get up and walk the first time. How many times does he fall on his bottom? Everything I tell and that's the same. You have to do the same thing when you're learning to do anything. You know. Everything I try for the first time, I'm an expert. Uh, well, I think I got a recorded evidence of that. Our, our podcast so <laughs> we look back when we started this thing oh my god <laughs> yeah we weren't we weren't so free talking were we <laughs> no <laughs> a heck of a time to get you to the same thing yeah <laughs> so uh, i think yeah, we, we were a little rough at first <laughs> yeah we were <laughs> a lot of editing <laughs> okay the last video and talk and i just briefly mentioned this uh, the, uh, the artist, I say, yeah, the artist way, which is, you know, a book that a lot of people rave about. And this was a, a nice little, uh, condensed introduction to it, you know, and that actually kind of boring, <laughs> but I mentioned it because, uh, there are so many artists that, uh, use that book. I have, I have a copy of the book. I have the, uh, audio book version of it and I, <sighs> But I'll be honest with you. It's not for me. I started the book up and I got excited because so many, when you know, we were in our class with Paul Klein, all their talk, they all raved about it. So I got, that's why I, you know, I got it. The artist way. Yeah, the art- yeah. My sister had that book and I read some parts of it and then other parts I thought, Oh man, I think that's a freaking waste of time. Yeah. I haven't got time to be that wordy in the morning and write three pages of thoughts that go on in my brain. <laughs> They fly too fast, you know. And I can't, I, I'm not, I don't want it. Hey, I don't want to put it down because it is actually, it's very, it, it's a very useful tool for getting those creative juices flowing for some artists. But, yeah, it is. I mean, not everything is for everybody. And that's the way you have to look at things like that. Some things are for you and some things aren't. Your brain doesn't work that way or it does, you know, so. It falls right in line with, remember, we got all excited about the Sergio Gomez when he was doing his, uh, his free workshop for artists at the beginning of the year, you know, and he had all these different steps and he had like what, five videos. And I think Diane and I both only got to like two, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> I didn't get to any because 
you know, I have a little problem, but that's okay. Before we, we agree, uh, no, that's just too much work. <laughs> I think that's kind of the, this artist way. You know? I don't know if it's too much work. It's just different. Like we don't, uh, you know, it, you work in different ways. And I think pe- some people benefit from how, um, you know, certain things are done and other people don't. So it's just, you know, you got to take things with a grain of salt. Use what you can and throw the rest of it out. <laughs> another, yeah. Another. Exactly. Uh, a way of saying that the artist's life, the artist's way is what you want it to be. If you are having problems deciding, okay, these are useful tools. These are tools, you know, to, to help you get you know, started. But if you pretty much know what you want to do, then it becomes the next thing. Take action. Do it. Yeah, it's in the doing that you learn. Yeah, I like uh, one of Stephen Bauman's court, uh, talks. He said he sees so many artists, they go from workshop to workshop to workshop to workshop, but they get complained because they're not improving. <laughs> <laughs> they're not taking action. They're not concentrating on, you know, is one workshop is probably all they ever needed, you know, to, to really get them uh, started, motivated, you know, and, and that's that's the whole point. You've got to you've got to pick those paintbrushes up. You or uh, pick that pencil up. Yeah. You know? So with that, I think we will uh, end. This is uh, one of our longer ones. I was surprised. I didn't know if we would uh, be able to get through this. You know, but uh, we managed to uh, rumble along. And we. I'm sorry. I I hope our listeners uh, don't think we're too preachy, but. I don't. I I can only speak for myself. I can't speak for Diane and Constance, but I just this life, this artist's life, is just so invigorating and so enjoyable that I just I want everybody to be an artist. I want other people to really understand and and, and jump into it. And it doesn't have to necessarily be visual art. You know, it could be writing. It could be music. It could be, but uh, cooking. Some people like to cook. Cooking, yeah. Some people like, you know, woodworking. That's an art. But uh, yeah, there's all kinds of art forms, crafts, culture. Because you, it is such a key component, and especially with all the neg- we were talking before we started recording, you know, all the negativity with the COVID and and the politics and everywhere you turn, it's like, oh my god. You need that creative outlet. <laughs> it's hard to keep from getting getting depressed. Well. If you start making art and start doing something creative, I guarantee you that will wipe away your depression. Unless you get angry because it doesn't come out right. Well, then you got to think about Steve Houston talk. Just flip the page and start over again. Just play. Have fun. So this is Clyde J. Kale, and you have been listening to the Artist Friends podcast, episode 86. I'll let... uh, Diane, say some last words on that. Uh, like, I look like she was going to say something. I cut her off. So, add- well, I just, I just think it's important that everybody has some kind of creative outlet, and whether it's like to, to be a, as a career or just something for fun, but just to um, be creative and, and enjoy it. You know, it's, it's all part of you know, your human experience and making life happier and better. Mm-hmm. Constance, you want to add to that? Yeah, I believe, you know, I believe in creativity. I mean, I would go through bouts of not painting or drawing for a while, but I always had things like making quilts or sewing clothes for myself or crocheting and knitting. I mean, it's all a challenge, you know, and that's what keeps your mind fresh is being challenging yourself to learn new things. And, uh, and then that way, you know, you, you just... It makes you happy, I guess. <laughs> That's what it's about. You, yeah. There's more to life than uh, going to work and uh, getting a paycheck and feeding the kids and and. Uh, well, that's important because you have to raise good children. <laughs> well, <okay>. that's important. <laughs> what I'm saying is just you know the the everyday life. There, there's more. There's more to it. Than you have. And, uh, creativity to it and you add some uh, artistic uh there's, function or there's, there's some artist that i can't I can't remember who that quotes from 
where they say art helps create um, to uh, shake off the daily dust <laughs> or something to that effect. I, I forget exactly how it's worded, but that's really what it does. Yep. Mm-hmm. Sure does. All right. Let's wrap this up. And I'm going to say bye-bye to uh, Diane and Constance. Let Diane say bye to everybody. <laughs> Good night, Clyde. Good night, Constance. Good night, everyone. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. I second that. Thank you, folks, so much for listening. And as always, give us some love. Give us a star rating and some thumbs up, however you hear these podcasts. Thank you so much. Until next time. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.edsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or a star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.